everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review, and today we're going to be doing my comic load for this week. Sorry, it's a little late today. I actually went down to see my newly born nephew, who is now four days old, I believe. So, um, comic reviews. Now, all these are number sevens. There are no uh, other numberings, just number seven. My favorite number, along with number one. So let's jump into it. Uh, first and foremost, we have Batman the Dark Knight. Uh, this is wrapping up the first story arc, which has taken quite a long time to do. Seven issues. Uh, Batman vs. Bane. Apparently, Bane was behind it all. Um, let's talk about the good. Uh, some pretty good fight scenes. Uh, the, the fight scenes were pretty good in here. I, I liked... Uh, the look of Poison Ivy in here looks a lot better than she did in Birds of Prey. And also, at the end, there was a little twist with the White Rabbit, which I actually didn't see coming, which was nice. Uh, and Batman's dialogue was better in this issue than it was in previous. Uh, bad is Bane's dialogue was a little cheesy. I thought it was as though the story arc just wrapped up in a nice, neat little package too well. Uh, and overall, the story wasn't too, too interesting. Um, however, on the whole, I'll give this a 3 out of 5. It was an okay issue from a mediocre comic. Uh, nothing against The Dark Knight, but it really is the weakest of the Batman comics because it really has nothing to offer that no other Batman comic doesn't already offer. So, Dark Knight... A 3 out of 5. Uh, moving on to Superman issue number 7. We get a new creative team with Dan Jurgens and Keith uh, Giffins jumping on. Uh, both of them have tackled Superman in some way, shape, or form. Dan Jurgens a bit more than Keith Giffins. Um, but like I said, new story arc. We get a new character in this. Hellspot or Heelspot? I think it's Hellspot. H E L. S-P-O-N-T, Hellspont, something like that. Uh, basically, Superman gets attacked by some mechanized robots, advanced technology, um, and they lure him into kind of a trap. And there he meets up with his uh, Hellspont. Uh, and we find out that he has connections with the Demonites. This is setting up one of the big crossover events, the End of the World crossover event, with Grifter and Stormwatch. Uh, so how well did this fare? Did the new... Um, creative team work out well with Superman. Well, this had good art. Uh, for the most part, some good dialogue, um, a nice ending to it, and uh, the new enemy seems intimidating, uh, but I don't know. There's just something about it that didn't rub me the right way. Maybe the fact that it was a start of a new story arc and it just didn't wow me. Uh, but on the whole, it was a decent issue. I think this is going to be a better creative team than we had uh, previously, which is quite funny because George Perez was the writer on the previous story arcs, and George Perez usually does fantastic, uh, but then again, he has a lot on his plate as of lately, so uh, I will also give this a 3 out of 5. Uh, I guess there's some promise to this. Uh, we have Aquaman issue number 7, and the basicness of this issue, the basicness, if that's a word, um, Black Manta is hunting down these groups of individuals who have a connection to Aquaman, uh, a connection to his past, which is kind of a, a cliffhanger at the end, exactly what connection. Um, and while this is going on, Aquaman and Mira are trying to figure out exactly who sank Atlantis if it was sunken by someone, um, and their connection to the past to Atlantis, and they're working with that doctor once again. Uh, Okay issue, it's a start to a new story arc, the dialogue was good, uh, the characters were good, it was well drawn, the action was a little lackluster, and I felt as though they took a little too much time with the Black Manta stuff, uh, but it was good Black Manta stuff, so I can't really complain too, too much. Um, I'll give this a 4 out of 5, good start to a new story arc, uh, looking forward to see what else comes from this. Ah, The Flash. Issue number seven. This is a part two to the Captain Cold uh, story that we've been going on with. Uh, and kind of the result of the Captain Cold story. Captain Cold is attacking Flash because he blames Flash for everything that's bad that's happened in his life, particularly stuff with his sister. Uh, we get some good character moments in this, which is nice, uh, between Flash and Captain Cold, especially when Captain Cold uh, reveals his motivation to, well, to become a little cold-hearted. No pun intended. 
<laughs> um, so we get that. Uh, some good moments with Patty. Good moments uh, with Flash and having to deal with uh, the re repercussions of him going terminal velocity. Because you have to remember, if he goes too fast, causes warp holes, causes time, dimensional, space, rifts, blah, blah, blah. So he has to be careful, and this happens, and he has to deal with the repercussions. Um very good, and, uh, you know, the Flash series has continued to impress me. The only bad I had to say about this is I felt as though Captain Cold didn't get as much time fighting as he did in the previous issue. He kind of just was beat up by Flash. Uh, but that's really the only bad. Um, I'm going to give this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Good issue. was very enjoyable. Um, now we're moving to Savage Hawkman. Um, Savage Hawkman has been a series that really hasn't impressed me at all, which is a big disappointment because Hawkman is one of my favorite characters. I really enjoyed Hawkman. Where we last left off on Hawkman, he was going after the Mortis Orb, which has the power to control life and death. And the gentleman ghost has the Mortis Orb. He intends to use it to make himself human again, to bring himself back to life. But in the process, he has risen the dead. Um, Hawkman teams up with Static in this to take out these zombies and to eventually get to the gentleman ghost. Good. Uh, the action was good. This is Hawkman action. He needs to be ripping and tearing through things, which is nice. I felt as though the team up between him and Static was very natural, seeing that they're both based in New York, and I like Static, and it actually worked out pretty well here. Um, and I felt as though, although the ending was a little cliche with Gentleman Ghost, it was still a fun ending. Bad? Uh, first and foremost is everyone's acting as though this is the first time Hawkman ever showed up, whereas in earlier in the series, it seems otherwise. It seems like he's been around for a bit. Uh, two, I felt as though the very, very end, the cliffhanger with another villain, is, uh, just really didn't do anything for me. Uh, I must admit the art was better in this than in previous issues. And for a series that I've been giving nothing but two out of fives, I will give this a three. 0.5 out of 5. Uh, this was fun. It was enjoyable. Why Why wasn't I getting this earlier on? It's not perfect. It's not up to what the standards should be for Hawkman, but it was fun. I think Hawkman should be... I, I described Hawkman to someone as uh, a cross between Indiana Jones and Wolverine, and that's what he should be. But uh, 3.5, which is, I think, the highest score I've given Hawkman. Maybe I'm being a little biased, but I, or maybe it's just the fact that Hawkman's been so shitty lately, but hey. Well, let's, let's give him a little credit. Uh, Fury of Firestorm, issue number seven. If you guys don't know this, I've been keeping up with Fury of Firestorm on the side. Um, not much to say about this issue other than Ronnie gets captured by one of the rogue Firestorms and uh, some traumatic stuff happens to him while Jason has to stay home and deal with the repercussions or the, uh, the ramifications of the terrorist Firestorms that are going around. Uh, the art felt a little bit off and a little bit different, and the dialogue felt a little too wordy. It could be because Gal Simone is not on this issue. I don't know if she left the comic or if she's just not on for this issue, but um, this issue didn't do anything for me. I, I was kind of just going through the motions with it. Uh, the ending was okay, but besides that, I wasn't really feeling anything else. Um... I'll give the uh, the art the artist I don't know something about the art that felt off. I'm gonna give this a two out of five. A series that has been consistently fun and enjoyable didn't feel it on this issue. So two out of five for Firestorm. Uh, now we're moving into Voodoo. If you haven't been keeping up with Voodoo, there are two Voodoo's. Um, for the sake of this video, I will call Voodoo number one Priscilla, which is the original Voodoo, and Voodoo number two the clone. Just Voodoo. Uh, Voodoo, the clone, uh, wants answers and she goes to the Demon Eye Tai Council and she tries to get those answers. While Priscilla is working with Blackjack and the Federal Agent to take out Voodoo. Uh, eventually, the two have a confrontation with each other. We get to learn a lot about why there's two Voodoo's, exactly how this all works together, and it has a shocking cliffhanger which. Um, I, I did not see coming, which was kind of bold. Sad because unfortunately we lose something in the process, but um, I will give this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Really, really, really good issue. Really enjoyed it. Uh, the art is great also. I'm really looking forward to the next issue. Uh, Blackhawks issue number 7. Uh, unfortunately, this series is getting canceled at issue number 8 with a lot of the other DC comics, um, like 
OMAC or Meta War and so on and so forth. Um, I've been enjoying this series, although it has had its downs, and this issue has had its up and downs. Um, good action in it, very good action, some good character moments, and a pretty good cliffhanger dialogue, not so good. Uh, the beginning a little too wordy. I'll give this a 3 out of 5 stars. It satisfied me. Actually, not even 3. I'll give it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. It satisfied me. It did a lot of things right, but it just didn't. I mean, we're getting to the end of the series. I don't know. It, it's just not wrapping up that well. So, 2.5 out of 5 stars. Next, we're moving in, and we're getting close to the end. All-Star Western issue number 7. Uh, this is a comic that every week I say, well, you know, I'm going to have to drop a comic. It's going to be All-Star Western. And then I continue to pick it up because it's a good comic. Um, basically, Jonah Hex meets up with Cinnamon and Nighthawk, who is actually uh, previous lives of Hawkman and Hawk Girl. Um, he works with them to try to find the guy that kind of ran off uh, from the Lords of Crime in Gotham. Um, Dr. Arkham is still there, and he gets, uh, and Jonah Hex goes into some pit fighting, and he meets up with a pit fighter whose name is, and if you give me one second, I'll give it to you, a female. Um, her name is Z.C. Branke. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, the backup issue, or the backup story, is a Nighthawk issue, or I keep on saying issue. Nighthawk story, given the origin of Nighthawk. Cinnamon is on in it, but only at the very beginning and very end. Um, I'll give this a 4 out of 5. Uh, the backup issue was good. The overall art is good and the dialogue is good, but I felt as though, I don't know, I felt a little lost during it. Maybe that's just me. Maybe it's because I read, like, this was the last comic I read of the day. Maybe I just had, uh, just burnt out a little. But, uh, yeah, other than that, it was a good issue. I enjoyed the fighting. I thought the, I thought it was overall fun. And I like seeing Nighthawk, and I like seeing Cinnamon, and I like to see more of them. Uh, so, four out of five stars. Okay, I'm going to do a double review here uh, with Justice League Dark and I Vampire together. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because the Rise of the Vampires crossover is happening. Part 1 is in Justice League Dark and Part 2 is in I Vampire. This is one of the first four crossovers uh, events that we're getting in DC Comics. Uh, we're getting Rise of the Vampires, we're getting The Rot, which is Swamp Thing and... Um, Animal Man. We're getting End of the World, which is uh, Superman, Grifter, and Stormwatch. And then we're getting Court of Owls, or uh, Night of the Owls, which is every Batman book and All-Star Western. Um, going into this, uh, back when I reviewed issue number six of Justice League Dark, I wasn't reading I Vampire, but since then I have picked up all the issues of I Vampire and it's become one of my favorite of the series for the new 52 and it's a really good series. Uh, good is the dialogue in this was good. The characters were good. Uh, this feels like a big crossover between Batman, Justice League Dark, and I Vampire. The Andrew Bennis stuff is good. Uh, on a whole, it was good in that respect. Some good action, too. Bad is Kane gets resurrected, and not the wrestler Kane. Uh, Kane, one of the first vampires, gets resurrected, and while he looks intimidated, he doesn't come off as anything interesting. Uh, Mary Queen of the Blood is more interesting than him, and I like Mary Queen of the Blood. Um, he's not very interesting, and I also don't like that it's based in Gotham. So much is happening in the Batman universe, we don't need something else there. Uh, it would be better if it was set in England, or maybe Seattle. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I would... <laughs> Um, other than those two facts, um, alone I'll give Justice League Dark a 4 out of 5, and I Vampire a 4.5 out of 5. Together I'll give them on a whole 4.5 out of 5. Um, I feel as though out of the four series, uh, four crossovers that are happening, the Swamp Thing Animal and Animal Man crossover with the Rot and the Night of the Owls are going to be the two big ones. Um, and although this is flying under the radar, I still think the Rise of the Vampire ones are going to be pretty good. So 4.5 for the two of them together. And last but certainly not least, Teen Titans issue number 7. Basic concept of this issue is Red Robin uh, rallies the troops to help get uh, Superboy back, to uh, retrieve Superboy from nowhere. Good, um, the dialogue is nice, particularly with Kid Flash. Uh, the action is good, everyone gets to display their powers. 
bad. Uh, there's a conversation between Solist and um, Red Robin, which ends kind of weird, and she just kind of stays behind. And I was a little lost on that. I don't know what they were trying to get at with it. I think Solus was being a little unreasonable towards Red Robin. Um, two is they make reference to Superboy issue 8 between the Ravager and uh, Wonder Girl fight that's supposed to happen. And we figure out who's the winner in this. Uh, so I don't like that. Uh, besides that, it was an okay issue and an okay issue at most. And I'll give it a 3 out of, uh, three out of 5. Yeah, it, you know, it could be worse. We've had worse. But, yes, that is the comics I picked up for this week. Quite a big week. Uh, quite a lot going on. If you want to see what comic I enjoyed the most, you can watch my Andrew Cutter Picks of the Weeks video, which will be up tomorrow. Uh, but, yeah, that was a big-ass week. Uh, the reason why I'm getting so much comics is because, obviously, several series are getting canceled. So, might as well get them. So, yes. What are your opinions on this week? What comics did you like? Do you agree with me or disagree with me? Let me know. Uh, with that said, I'm going to end this video here. This is Andrew saying peace out for now.